welcome again, uh, Abdo. Yeah, thank you very much. Abdo, yeah. you have uh, 20 minutes for the presentation and five minutes for interaction. So the floor okay. is for you. Okay, thank you very much for, for your uh, letting, me, letting me to do this uh, presentation. Uh, thank you, Ali Hassan, for your invitation. Uh, today, I will talk about uh, 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 coronavirus, fighting against coronavirus, a computational biophysics approach. Uh, actually, all of us uh, are, uh, uh, have uh, some, uh, I mean, uh, we encounter this uh, pandemic, and uh, all of us know, know a lot of information about COVID-19. Uh, so today I will uh, start my talk. First, I, will, I, I am Abdul Fiki from Biophysics Department, Cairo University. I am associate professor uh, since last year, and I am a junior associate at the ICTP. Uh, today, I will talk about uh, the pandemic, how uh, it affects uh, us, and how can physics help in fighting against COVID-19. So uh, all of us know that uh, uh, more than one million people are uh, uh, gone due to the pandemic and uh, about more than 50, 50, 50 million are uh, infected with this virus. Uh, um, for, for us uh, to know that this is the seventh uh, defined human coronavirus today. So we have uh, uh, six different strains of human coronaviruses uh, during uh, the last uh, uh, 20 years. Uh, and uh, we will see how physics can help fighting against COVID-19. Uh, this is These are the immersive human coronavirus strains that was uh, have some symptoms like flu or cold. Uh, and the, the most uh, affecting three types, uh, three uh, uh, strains are the SARS-CoV, which uh, uh, started in uh, 2002, and MERS or Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus started uh, 2012, and the current uh, COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2. Uh, there is an intermediate host, which are civet cat in the case of SARS, uh, dromedary camel in the case of MERS, and uh, it is unknown today uh, that uh, which which is an intermediate uh, host that transfers this uh, corona. Virus to human, but uh, bangolin is uh, or snake maybe the host, the intermediate host. So uh, today we talk about uh, coronavirus disease. So, uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, Africa is less affected with the uh, human coronavirus with about 4% uh, of the uh, total infection and total deaths uh, in Africa. And the research conducted uh, in, in Africa is about 2.8% of the total research uh, on COVID-19. Uh, this is uh, less, uh, less than the, the total population of uh, Africa, which is 17% of the world population. Uh, but still we have some uh, I mean, uh, we, we, we can help uh, people around the world to uh, get the uh, right of this uh, infectious, highly infectious disease. So uh, today I will focus on the targeting of COVID-19. Targeting meaning that we can select some proteins of this virus uh, by vaccine, by antivirals, by immunomodulators. Uh, all of these are targeting strategies that we can work in. Today, I will focus on the antivirus and vaccine developments. Uh, these are the proteins of the SARS-CoV-2 that we can target, uh, the structural protein and non-structural proteins. Uh, for structural protein, the most important is the spike protein. Uh, we have envelope protein, membrane protein, nephrocapsid protein. And for the non-structural proteins are the protein that, that uh, synthesize inside the host cell, like the uh, papine-like protease, main, -like, uh, main protease, and the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, which are the most three important non-structural protein of the uh, SARS-CoV-2. Uh, the red-colored uh, uh, proteins are that I used to, uh, to target in my research during this year, uh, but today I will talk about the spike protein only. So spike protein 
it's a surface exposed protein for the virus, uh, and it is a heterotrimeric. We can see here uh, tr three copies of the uh, of the protein that uh, work together in uh, homotrimeric. Sorry, homotrimeric, uh, and we have uh, two populations: the post diffusion, which is minority, and the pre fusion isoforms, which uh, which is a majority of the surface uh, spike proteins. Uh, this perfusion are uh, some are closed. So here we can see the this region is called the receptor binding domain. This domain, so we can uh, see all of the, the domain are closed, or one is open, or two are open. Okay, this is over the virus particle. After infection, uh, it, the the perfusion isoform transfer to the post diffusion in order for the virus to enter the cell. So the, 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 the main function of the spike protein is host cell recognition. So you recognize some host cell receptor like ACE2. Uh, entry through the post diffusion isoform, then uh, the virus can fuse with the membrane of the host cell. And the last is escaping the virus the vir uh, from the host immune system due to the glycosylation that present here. We can see a lot of glycos glycosylation sites over the spike protein that help the virus escape the immune system. So uh, now uh, I am uh, talking about a host cell protein called heat shock protein A5, uh, HSB A5, or glucose regulated protein GRB78, which is a host cell receptor that have a, a function inside the cell in the normal condition. It is a master of the unfolded protein response, HBR. Uh, as we can see from this figure, we have two domains, the nucleotide binding domain and substrate binding domain. Uh, this protein uh, have, uh, has a, a main function inside the endoplasmic reticulum of the cell as it captures unfolded proteins and uh, mediate it through the degradation or refolding mechanism. So its function inside the ER as uh, endoplasmic reticulum associated degradation mechanism. Uh, captures unfolded proteins, and uh, GRB has a function over the cell surface, which is called cell surface GRB78, uh, which acts as a receptor. Uh, also, GRB is excreted to the bloodstream, uh, so it has some immune response, uh, and uh, some uh, work is, uh, was done for uh, how to uh, check the concentration of GRB in the blood and detect uh, if the patient is COVID-19 infected or not. So the complementary, complementary uh, test uh, with the PCR and uh, other tests that used to check the infectivity of, it, of, of SARS-CoV-2. Here we can see uh, the nucle uh, nucleotide binding domain, how the ATB is ATB ADB binding affects the structural uh, flexibility and the structural arrangement of the substrate binding domain. Uh, and here uh, we have two conditions, normal condition where is, there is no stress on the cell. So the GRB78 is bound to three, in, three important enzymes, which are ATF6 and BERK and, uh, and the IR1. These three enzymes are important in some uh, physiological function inside the cell, like, uh, like the enhanced folding like, uh, uh, so uh, under stress condition, uh, GRB is release these enzymes, make it uh, available for its function. So the IRE1 enhance the folding, uh, A AT ATF6 uh, move to the Golgi apparatus where it is cleaved and go to the nucleus to act as a nuclear uh, activator for the GRB over expression. Uh, while the BERC is in uh, its work as inhibits the translation and protein senses. So uh, all over this cycle, we have a lot of GRB that over express in the cell and translocate from the ER to cytoplasm, then to the membrane of the cell to be uh, available for basogen, uh, viral or fungal basogen recognition. There is a lot of uh, work that's done uh, on, on uh, viral or fungal infection that uh, assisted with the presence of the CSGRB78 over the host cell. So, so uh, uh, 
in, in this study, uh, I worked with, with my, some of my students uh, on uh, how uh, GRB expression can affect COVID-19 uh, infectivity. Uh, we used uh, computational methods like uh, uh, sequence alignment, like protein, protein docking, uh, and then the molecular dynamic simulation to check uh, how, is the, how is the binding can occur between GRB78 and COVID-19 spike protein. So here is a sequence uh, alignment we use to check uh, the different spike protein from the different human coronavirus strains. We have here the seven strains of the human coronaviruses uh, along with the, the new coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2. Uh, and we define here four regions for regions that are able to attach to the spike protein. Uh, this selection is based on sequence identity and the presence of the disulfide bond in the, in the first and last amino acid, which is cysteine. Uh, we check the uh, sequence identity for each region and we check the hydrophobicity index for each region. And we detect that region four or region five may be the best region for a spike recognition. After validation of the structural binding or the uh, docking between the, the different regions, we define this region four, which is this eight amino acid as the best region that can recognize uh, SARS-CoV-2 SARS spike protein. So this is the viron, this is the spike protein, this is the trimeric spike, and this is the region four that can detect the GRB78. Okay, now this is the model that we built for the binding between GRB78 and SARS-CoV uh, monomer. So here, here is the binding site. We can see this is the region four, the red one, and this is the amino acid in the uh, uh, substrate binding domain, beta, of the GRB78. So uh, now uh, this is the model we built uh, under a stress condition that based on the infectivity of the virus or, or any stress response to the cell, GRB is overexpressed in the ER, released to the membrane and becomes cell surface exposed and can detect the spike protein of the coronavirus. So this work has been published in Journal of Infection and followed by uh, this uh, uh, letter to the same journal. We have uh, changed the model a little bit by uh, using this uh, sort of structure of the, this is a channel protein, and this is ACE2, main receptor of the SARS-CoV-2, and part of the spike RB, RBD, or receptor binding domain. Here we make uh, docking, protein-protein docking to, uh, to between, between GRB surface, cell surface GRB78 and the spike RDRB, and here is the binding site of this GRB to the, the complex. As we can hear, as we can see here, GRB uh, can be surface exposed, but some protein have to uh, carry this uh, GRB78 in order for it to be able to interact with this complex. Uh, so uh, now we can, we can uh, came across the, uh, the different coronavirus strains. Can we uh, see uh, if the other coronaviruses can be used as a vaccine or maybe help in vaccine development? Uh, here is a, a part of the sequence alignment, multiple sequence alignment of the different human coronaviruses. As you can see here, we there is three finger brains for the uh, for the maybe the vaccination or cross vaccination. Uh, we can see here the this amino acid cysteine and this amino acid which is proline or glycine. And here is the uh, other cysteine amino acid, maybe a fingerprint for uh, recognition of the GRB. Uh, and um, uh, th 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 this work is based on sequence alignment and also uh, molecular dynamic simulation of the GRB. Uh, and uh, and, it, uh, and uh, we, we predict in this that uh, we uh, immersed coronaviruses which are the coronaviruses that has low uh, infectivity, like uh, NL63, 229E, and OC43, and HKU1, may be cross-vaccinated with SARS-CoV-2. So we have here all the, con all the condition for this, uh, for immersive human coronaviruses. And this work was published in Frontier in Pharmacology. Uh, 
as a perspective. Now uh, we came uh, to another point which is important, other, uh, other viruses. Can other viruses be detected by this protein? Yes, we predicted the uh, Ebola virus glycoprotein GB1 to the uh, GRB78, a human papilloma virus, E6 to the GRB78 and Zika virus to GRB. But we don't have time to talk about these uh, viruses. So we focus on the uh, coronavirus now. Now, uh, uh, GRB78 can be used to targeting uh, strategy against coronaviruses. Uh, we can target the GRB uh, surface, cell surface GRB78 with peptides or monoclonal antibodies or phytochemicals. Uh, there is a lot of work that used uh, these uh, three types of targeting mechanism against uh, cancer, uh, uh, different types of cancers, because the cell surface GRB is overexpressed in uh, uh, any type of cell stress, like cancer, uh, like, like different types of cancer. So uh, in this study, I focused on the, some natural compounds that can interact with cell surface GRB and so can inhibit the recognition between uh, spike protein and GRB78. So, uh, sorry, Abdul, you yes. have five minutes, please. Okay, okay, no problem. Uh, so now this is uh, some uh, natural compounds that based on uh, natural product, we can see here uh, all of these phytochemicals for, this is uh, four phytochemicals. Uh, um, Sorry, uh, these are four phytoestrogens, and uh, this is some uh, oils like from olive oil, oil uh, and the chlorogenic acids. Uh, here we can see the cinnamaldehyde, uh, cinnamon, and cymokinone from the black seed, uh, and other uh, in ingredients that we can find in our food. Uh, okay, so I tested this com uh, this products or this natural product with GRB how it can uh, bind to the substrate binding beta of the GRB. Uh, after making the molecular dynamic simulation for the GRB as a whole, as, as a whole protein, uh, and see uh, how is the dynamics of the different, different regions of the protein. This is the most uh, dynamical part, which is uh, substrate binding mean alpha, which is uh, important in uh, uh, some motion of this domain uh, over the substrate binding mean beta. Because uh, as a normal function, substrate binding in alpha move to the to cover the substrate binding beta, domain beta. Okay, so these are the docking uh, we have done using Autodoc Vina uh, after clustering of the molecular dynamic simulation data or trajectories of GRB, and we can find here the phytoestrogens are the best compound in binding GRB seventy eight substrate binding main beta. Uh, we, we have here also some compounds that have uh, best results, okay? So these are selected three uh, compounds that have high, high uh, binding energy, uh, by, uh, which is minus 8.3, minus uh, 10, oh no, uh, minus 8.6 and minus 6.9. Uh, so uh, as a conclusion, we can say that we built a model for the uh, cell surface GRB binding to the spike protein and we uh, try to tr inhibit the, uh, the recognition site of the cell surface GRB with uh, some uh, phytochemicals. Uh, and uh, we are working uh, in this uh, region to, um, to in may include the peptides uh, and maybe the monoclonal antibody uh, in inhibiting the cell surface GRB78. Uh, okay, so thanks uh, to my supervisor to Dr. Al-Shimi and my, my uh, supervisor and other postdoc, Dr. Khaled Barakat, Dr. Professor Salam Taradaghi, and Professor Ali Hassan Ali for his uh, assist, assistance and for uh, helping, helping, helping me to, to do this work. Um, to my biophysics department at Cairo University. Thank you very much. I finished now the presentation, so if someone has questions, I'm happy to ask uh, to her. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Abdul. So you can unmute yourself and ask questions, please. <clears throat> um, I. Uh... Yeah. 
Can, can I talk us? Yeah. Yes, please. I, yes, please. I have your visit, uh, Silvia. The if you open your of, video. Uh, am I okay? Can you see me? Yeah, I see you. your video is there. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. I am a bit puzzled by your lack of specificity. You say that you can uh, predict, but at least you predict an interaction also with the E6 papillomavirus protein, with proteins from yeah. Ebola, which are very yeah, yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. How do uh, you explain that? Yeah, uh, first, uh, we, we have uh, different uh, uh, bubbles that say that uh, different viruses can be uh, recognized with uh, HO protein A5. But uh, there is no prediction of the, how is the binding occur. So I predict the binding site between the GRB78 and these different uh, viral proteins. So we can see here in the Ebola virus, uh, the glycoprotein GB1 uh, is, is mentioned in, a, in papers that this may be uh, recognized by, by GRB. So I make protein-protein uh, docking and see how, which is the best uh, region that can bind. So I predict the binding site. Uh, uh, and for, for the human papillomavirus E6, this is a, a, a protein that uh, uh, for, uh, I mean, it's inside, inside the host cell. So uh, it, is, it is mentioned in the review and the other papers that E6 is stabilized by heat shock proteins. But how <coughs> this interaction occurs is not mentioned. So I use a prediction to, uh, to check the binding site between the E6 and the URB78. And this also for the Zika virus and the hepatitis C virus E2. So I just uh, make prediction of the binding site. Yeah. Based on experimental data that yeah. you published. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because no, I was just surprised by the you know large number of uh, yeah. very yeah. different proteins that were yeah. uh, you know involved. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. May I ask a question? Hi, Abdo. This is Loredana. Yeah, <laughs> nice Hi, Loredana. to see you. Are you? Yeah, nice uh, to see you. So I have just uh, uh, one question. Uh, do you um, relate to your, your um, uh, calculations uh, to uh, correlate to any uh, experimental platform, model experimental platform? Do uh, you have any kind of data available on, uh, I don't know, this... Uh, uh, GRB embedded in the membrane and uh, and uh, yeah. uh, recognizing uh, the, 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 the the RBD of the spike and uh, yeah. which which are the, the types of the experiment you confront uh, to? Yeah, for, for my study it is totally computational. I don't have any experimental data. <clears throat> I I'm trying to make some collaboration with uh, other people. But uh, until now, we, I don't have any uh, established co collaboration uh, with the experimental validation of the recognition of the spike with GRB78. But a lot of research are, uh, have some correlation between the GRB level in the cell and the uh, and the SARS-CoV-2 inf infectivity. So yeah. people with COVID-19 are expressed GRB uh, more than people don't uh, have the COVID-19 infection. So. Uh, 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 you, yes, I, I am happy to make any collaboration with uh, experimental people, uh, but uh, until now, I don't have uh, established uh, uh, platform. Um, uh, yeah, platform. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Ali, you can ask. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much, Abdul. Uh, I have two uh, two questions for you. One is, you didn't say anything about numbers with respect to the uh, the energetics. So you, you know you you yeah. computed I guess you you got some estimates of free uh, binding free energies of uh, between these two sites that you were studying. Yeah. I, what, I, yeah. What what just order of magnitude? What are the numbers? Uh, uh, number for what? So, so in um, in the um, the GRP. So go back. Yeah. No. So, for example, the, 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 the binding free energy between um, the RBD domain and uh, the GRP. Yeah. What is, no. what, is the, what is the binding free energy? 
yeah, I used uh, for this. You, you mean for this model? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I use here the Hadox uh, software to predict binding mode and binding uh, uh, binding energy between the two proteins. So the binding energy was uh, like this: hundred minus uh, hundred, uh, with the Hadox. I mean, this is the Hadox score. This like is this is in kilojoules per mole or kcal per mole or what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in in ha this is a Hadoop score, not Kirin Fabrum. Ah, it's 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 a normalized somehow. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So mm -hmm. this is not the uh, I mean the the actual binding energy. And this so this score. so this number is a large number is what you're telling me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But this this one is not actual binding energy. It is just a score for the binding. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. as a, my second question is related to uh, the talk from yesterday by Daniel yeah uh, who also was sort yeah, of uh, uh, alluding to the, the role of natural products yeah um, can you comment a bit on uh, you know uh, yeah the class of natural products that he was talking about versus you yeah. and uh, yeah yeah, I see the last lecture of Daniel, and he he have uh, working with some different uh, group of natural product. So uh, for me, uh, I was working with this uh, natural product because, uh, I mean, before coronavirus, I was working on GRB seventy eight. So uh, this is uh, some uh, combination of that uh, natural product that I used before, mm -hmm. and I tried to with uh, GRB uh, and found this is. Uh, found in our food. So, I mean, it is uh, easy to find and uh, not expensive. We can see some items here from the honeybee, from the, from, uh, the cinnamon, from uh, uh, simoquinone and the black seed. So, I mean, uh, these uh, items we can f found in our food, in our vegetable and fruits. So, mm -hmm. uh, it is, uh, I mean, we, we can eat these uh, vegetable fruits and honeybee and like natural product and uh, we prevent uh, uh, not only the SARS-CoV-2 but also uh, any stress to the cell. So, 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 so the message is we should, uh, we should move to an African diet. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. This, is, this is the message. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.